The movie opens in 1942, Berlin, amidst the deadly Second World War. Life has dramatically changed for the citizens, as bombings, raids, and genocides have become common. The rise of the Nazis has also restricted freedom across the country. We are then introduced to our protagonist, a teenager named Friedrich Weimar. He aspires to go to college and get a degree, but his poor parents don't have the finances for it. Currently, he works part-time at a factory, where he is made to do a lot of physical labor. He also practices boxing in his free time, as it is one of the things he loves. One morning, as he is practicing at the local gym, a large number of Napola students arrive there. These Nazi schools were prevalent during the Second World War, and their main task was to train teenagers to become pioneers in different fields. Soon, Friedrich is asked to fight against one of the students, who is a professional boxer. He starts off well and lands some heavy blows onto his opponent. This makes the student delirious, and he is on the verge of losing. However, Friedrich feels bad for him and hesitates to knock him out. Taking advantage of this opportunity, the student regains his composure and defeats Friedrich. Despite the loss, our boy manages to impress the Napola trainer. He is then invited to the prestigious school, where he can practice boxing and other forms of exercise. Friedrich is hesitant about it, as his father is an anti-Nazi. However, when the trainer tells him about the privileges he'll get at Napola, he agrees. Later that day, he goes to the application center, where his health and speech are checked. Many applicants fail in this part because they are either too weak or too timid, or they simply don't know how to say Nine! with as much conviction as their boy Hitler. But Friedrich excels in each and every category and is eventually selected. Now, the only thing standing in between him and Napola is a consent signature from his father. That night, Friedrich returns home late and nervously hands the letter to his father. Just as he expected, the old man refuses to sign and shouts at him to stay away from such madness. Ironically, he shouts nine with a ton of conviction. He wants Friedrich to become a high-level factory worker in the future, which will give them a good income. Later, Friedrich helps his little brother take a bath, and the two chat about their respective days. It is evident that they have a very special bond. I'll say he's given him a bath. Shortly after, Dad arrives, and he also bathes in the same water to save money. This shows how poor the family is right now. Friedrich is then told that he will be sent to a public institution next month. There, he can meet other guys of his age and learn technical skills required in factories. Dad is worried that Friedrich might get involved with the Nazis, so he wants to send him away as soon as possible. This proves to be the final straw for Friedrich, so he forges his dad's signature and leaves home. His parents find a note left by him the next morning, which shatters them. In the next scene, Friedrich finally arrives at the academy, and he is awestruck by its magnificent exterior. Then he meets the boxing teacher and is awestruck by his magnificent posterior. The boxing teacher greets him and introduces him to one of his roommates, Kristoff. The two boys quickly bond and Kristoff shows him around the place. He also briefs him about the rules of the academy, warning him to be very obedient. Later, Friedrich puts on his new uniform and stares into the mirror. He appears to be very proud of the decision he has made. All the students are then called to an assembly where the headmaster delivers an inspiring speech. He talks about how great their country is and addresses the students as future elites. Hearing this, Friedrich cannot stop smiling as he is greatly impressed by the speech. After the assembly, Friedrich is introduced to the rest of his roommates. All of them appear to be very welcoming and friendly. In particular, a guy named Siggy assures Friedrich that they will always be ready to help. As the group continues talking, a senior student named Jauka interrupts them. He is notorious for being a bully around the school, probably because no one knows how to say his name without wasting any time, he goes to the new student Friedrich and orders him to do 20 push-ups. So I'll seek push up our boy obliges and starts the exercise, but the boxing trainer soon arrives and stops the commotion. That night, Friedrich has a difficult time falling asleep as he misses his family a lot. While gazing around the place, he notices that the adjacent bed is empty and asks about it. However, Kristoff tells him to keep quiet, as they aren't allowed to talk after the lights are out. Shortly after, Friedrich hears some noise coming from outside, so he goes to the window to check. He sees a car dropping off a new student who is greeted by the headmaster. It is evident that he is the son of a VIP. No way, it's little Billy Bob Hitler. In the morning, Friedrich discovers the same guy in the adjacent bed. He is Albrecht Stein, the son of the city's wealthy governor. One would assume that he is an arrogant and brash kid who loves to fly 
want his dad's power, but Albrecht is actually the opposite. He is kind-hearted and soft by nature. He also opposes the war and doesn't want to become a soldier. The only thing he likes is writing poems and essays. He's, he's doomed. As the students get ready for the day, Siggy looks worried as he has wetted his bed again. He's frightened about the consequences and the humiliation he will suffer soon. Meanwhile, Friedrich struggles to make his bed, so Albrecht offers to help him. This proves to be a good bonding between the two, and they quickly become friends. After a while, Jalher arrives in the room and gets to know what Siggy has done. He promptly reports it to their cruel instructor, Carl, who then decides to make a statement out of the boy. Carl orders Siggy to bring his mattress to the field and pee on it in front of everyone. The latter hesitates to do so, but Carl puts him under pressure by making all the students do burpees until he finally obliges. Yeah, burp until he pees. Left with no options, Siggy reluctantly pees on his own mattress. Later, in class, the students are taught about the Nazi ideologies. Special praise is given to their leader and chancellor, Hitler. The teacher also justifies the killing of Jews by emphasizing Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest. During another class, the students are taught how to load weapons and shoot them. As the days pass, Friedrich forms a special bond with Albrecht, and the two help each other out in every way possible. Friedrich also excels in his boxing class, as his trainer has high hopes for him. Turns out, Napola was the undisputed boxing champion for many years, but they have been on the losing end lately. So, the trainer hopes that Friedrich will bring the glory back to the school. A month later, the comrades receive letters from their respective homes. Friedrich's mother asks him about his well-being, and reveals that everyone is doing fine at home. As for Albrecht, his parents have returned his essays, saying that they are very well written. However, the boy knows that they didn't read them at all, because he had left markers between the pages. Feeling bad for him, Friedrich takes some of his poems and decides to read them that night. Over the following months, Friedrich's training progresses steadily, and he shows improvement with each passing day. Eventually, the day of qualification arrives. Friedrich puts up a strong fight, forcing his opponent against the ropes. However, to secure victory, he must knock out his opponent, who has already surrendered. This leaves him in a dilemma once again, as he feels bad for the guy. But in an impulsive moment, he chooses victory over morality and ends up knocking the dude's ass out. This earns him applause from all the spectators, except for Albrecht, who questions why he attacked a defenseless opponent. The next morning, Siggy is in trouble as he wets his bed again. When Jalper learns of this, he blackmails the boy, asking him for a substantial substantial amount of money, or else he will inform the trainer. He gives Siggy until dinner to gather the funds. Later that day, the cadets receive training on handling stick grenades in the field. Most of them carry out their work precisely, but one student panics and drops the grenade right in front of them. This prompts the instructor, Carl, to flee the scene right away. Now, with seconds remaining on the clock, Siggy decides to step up. He heroically shields the explosive, saving the lives of over 20 cadets at the cost of his own. The following day, he is posthumously awarded a Medal of Honor for his bravery. The higher officials then hold a short conference for him, and even Albrecht's dad is among the speakers. Meanwhile, all the students are angry at Carl for abandoning them when they needed him the most. They realize that he is a coward, despite acting tough on the outside. During the next training session, Carl instructs the cadets on strengthening their abdominal muscles and requests someone to punch him in the stomach as a demonstration, seeking revenge for his friend. Friedrich volunteers and delivers a painful punch. <laughs> Later, Albrecht invites Friedrich to his mansion on the occasion of his dad's birthday. As they all have dinner, Friedrich notices how Albrecht is often ignored by his parents. Dad even forbids him from reciting a poem, saying it is not the right hobby for men. When the adults become drunk, they pressure the two boys to fight each other. Friedrich expectantly refuses, but Albrecht feels humiliated by his family, so he convinces his friend for a round. He also asks him not to show any sympathy. As a result, Friedrich knocks his friend out with a single punch. On the bright side, Albrecht is going to write a beautiful poem about this. Several weeks later at the academy, the students are gathered at the hall for an important announcement. The headmaster reveals that some Soviet prisoners have stolen weapons, committed murders, and fled a nearby village. The cadets are then divided into groups and instructed to apprehend the prisoners by force, armed with rifles and authorized to use lethal force if 
necessary, Albrecht and Friedrich once again find themselves on the same team. While on a mission, they encounter a group of people fleeing from a hideout. Without hesitation, they open fire, only to realize they've just killed a group of children. Albrecht tries to save one surviving child, but is stopped by his father, who arrives shoots the child dead. He also commands Albrecht to toughen up before leaving. Overwhelmed by the incident, the poor boy ends up throwing up. As the tensions escalate, Friedrich also gets into a fight with one of his friends. This results in both of them getting punished with a 24-hour imprisonment. The next day, in a literature class, the teacher instructs them to write a poem about winter. Albrecht's poem starts innocently, but he soon veers off, condemning his father's actions of killing innocent children the previous night. This in rages the teacher, and he asks Albrecht to take his words back. However, the latter refuses, as he is proud of what he wrote. As a result of his actions, he is conscripted to fight in the Eastern Front against the Soviets. When Friedrich is finally released from prison, he learns about his friend's fate. He angrily questions why Albrecht wrote such a risky poem, but the latter once again defends his actions, saying he just stood up for his beliefs. This leads to an argument, and they start fighting on the floor. However, However, they soon stop and start crying in each other's arms. During the next training session, the cadets are tasked with navigating through a hole in a frozen lake. Kristoff goes first, and he passes through the lake effortlessly. He also secretly connects the holes with a rope so that the others can navigate easily. However, when it is Albrecht's turn, he deliberately stops in the middle of the lake. Friedrich realizes what he's doing and desperately tries to save him, but his efforts are futile. Albrecht then lets go of the rope and slowly drowns in the lake, devastating everyone. That night, a heartbroken Friedrich writes an obituary for his friends, which he wants to publish in the newspaper. However, the director refuses to do it, claiming that what Albrecht did was an act of cowardice. Elsewhere, Albrecht's family is also informed of the tragic news. His mother weeps uncontrollably, but Dad shows no sign of remorse. He believes that his son was weak, and this was going to happen sooner or later. Days later, the grand boxing competition finally begins. Despite Friedrich being in a depressed state, he gets ready to fight. For the first few minutes, he puts in a good show and lands some powerful punches on his opponent. But when he sees Albrecht's father in the audience, smiling as if nothing happened, he drops his guard and deliberately loses the match. This humiliates Napola in front of everyone. As a consequence, Friedrich is stripped of his uniform, publicly humiliated, and expelled from the academy. The movie ends as he slowly walks away from the notorious Napola. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.